Hello and welcome to my first legit YouTube video. My name is Mr. Davis and I want to say thank you for stopping by. If you could do me a solid and click the subscribe button and the little bell next to it, it would be greatly appreciated. Let me do a quick introduction of myself. I'm a content creator over on TikTok with over 200,000 followers and I recently started streaming on Twitch. Uh, we just passed six months and it's been going amazing. Today's video is one that's been requested quite a bit from me, editing a Twitch clip and formatting it to be able to post on TikTok so you get something other than a rectangle with, you know, a box above and below it. I am not sponsored by any of the companies or software companies that we use today in the video. They are just what I use to edit in my videos. The clip we're editing and formatting today is a pretty basic clip. If you guys would like to see more in-depth editing or other features that I use through DaVinci Resolve, which is the software we're going to be using today, uh, let me know in the comments and I'll gladly make another video for you guys. As I said before, we're using DaVinci Resolve 16, the free version, not the paid version today. If you're using a different software, not DaVinci Resolve, the tools and stuff that we use today might be located somewhere else within your software, but realistically, most of what we're doing today should be pretty similar to what you would do on a, on a different editing software. Alrighty guys, so step one is downloading the clip that we want to our computer. So I'm on my Twitch channel here. I've already got my clip pulled up. If you need to find yours, you'll click on videos, click on featured, click on clips there. Here's all the clips that have been saved by you or viewers in your Twitch videos. If you need to learn how to edit or pull clips from your videos without having to download the entire VOD, um, let me know in the comments and I will get a video out doing that as well. So the clip we're using today is from Fortnite here. It is a pretty basic double headshot, but it's great for me considering I don't play that game. Um, what you'll do is you'll click share here, you'll click download, and then you'll be ready to go. The program that I use is DaVinci Resolve 16. I believe it's been updated now to 17, but you'll want to make sure that if you don't have this and you're downloading it, make sure you get the beta version unless you want to pay for it. Um, I would recommend checking it out before paying for it because I know there's some other pretty sweet programs out there if you're going to actually put up money. This is the one that I like to use right now. I've learned how to use it and it's actually pretty sweet. The program does crash quite often um, randomly, so I try to make a good habit of saving my progress as I go. Um, and I feel like that's something that you should be doing anyways. So we're going to start new with an untitled project here. When you double click on that, this is what you're going to see. Um, I like to switch over to edit. I don't really use this this section here. I feel like we can use those. Here's what you'll see. Basically, you're going to see your media pool, which is this here, your effects library. If this isn't highlighted, click on it, highlight it. You're going to use one of the effects out of this later. This is your timeline here. Um, and then this is where once we have a clip that we're working on, the inspect options, zoom, you know, crop, all that fun stuff is going to be right here. So first off, you'll notice this is not going to work on a phone screen. This is going to be a rectangle in the middle of your phone screen, and that's what we're here to avoid. So to do that, we're going to right click, click on timeline, create new timeline. We're going to use custom settings, um, click format here. Basically, we're just going to flip these two numbers and it's going to change that rectangle the other way around. Fits pretty well inside a phone screen. So we're going to switch this to 1080. We're going to switch this one to 1920. And then we're going to always switch this to 60 frames per second. It's going to keep from degrading your video. It's going to make your video look the best. So click Create. And if you'll notice, boom, that kind of looks like a phone screen. So now when we throw videos up here, we'll be able to edit them and get them to fit. We'll have a good guideline of, you know, how much we need to zoom in, what we need to crop out to make them fit on a phone screen and actually look appealing. So. This is where you're going to add any media that you want. That could be anything from your Twitch clip that we're going to be working on today or a logo that you may have downloaded or, you know, whatever you may be using um, audio files. If you want to add music, if you're making an intro video and you want to add music, this is a great place to work on that as well. So we're going to right click. We're going to choose import media here and it'll bring up our files. I'm going to use the Fortnite double that I've saved here. Bingo. We're good to go. So this will stay up here. We can we're going to bring it down here to work on in the timeline simply by clicking it, dragging it. I like to bring it all the way up front, make sure everything's nice and easy. Now, if you'll notice when I brought that down here, it brought up a little link symbol here between these two, and that's because these the clip and the audio are linked together. 
which is great for moving around, but for what we're doing today, I don't really need those linked. We're not going to be moving the clip that much. We're not, we don't need them linked currently. So once they're highlighted, right click on them, click link clips, and you'll notice it took the little logo away. Now I can click and move the one around without affecting the other. I like to make my TikToks in a layered format. So I like to think of it as three layers, basically from the screen itself, there's the front layer, another layer, and the background. So we're going to make those layers right here very easily by highlighting. We're going to hold Alt on your keyboard, click and drag. Boom. Easy as that. Now you've got three different layers that you can manipulate individually, and they won't affect the other unless you choose to do so. I like to work from the furthest layer away and then put my new layers on top. I feel it's easiest to do it that way. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the inspector up here. If this isn't already highlighted, click inspector once you're on your layer you want to work on, and you're going to turn the opacity all the way down. You won't really notice because the other layers are still visible but you just basically made those two layers invisible. So you can work on this layer freely, and then you can bring those layers back into visibility when you're ready to work on them. So for our first layer here, we're gonna click on it. This one's super easy. It's just what we're putting in the background so there's no empty space on the phone screen. That's primarily what we're trying to avoid today because that's what's gonna separate you from somebody who's randomly saving a Twitch clip and posting on TikTok. This here and this here looks unprofessional. Gaming TikTok has come so far now to where if you're not getting better, then you're gonna get left behind. Sure, you'll see clips that have this open space that do well. Those are the exception, not the rule. So this first layer, we're just simply gonna grab this here and we're gonna zoom in. Uh, I like to zoom in to basically, you can still see what's going on, but it's not the primary. Um, there's different tools that we can use here. You can go move this left or right. You can change the rotation on it, whatever you might want to do. Another thing that's pretty sweet about Resolve is that you can undo anything that you do very, very easily by simply clicking and holding Control and hitting Z. You notice it reverted all of those changes that I just made, and we're back to the normal layer. Or edit, undo, edit, redo, or edit history here, and you can kind of see what you've done so far. What we're gonna do with this first bit, we're gonna zoom it in. I like to zoom it in to where you still get the information, but there's not a bunch of a bunch of nonsense going on. This is where we're gonna use our effects. If your effects isn't highlighted and you don't see any, click effects library, it'll bring it up down here. Use the open effects drop down. Uh, and then under filters, I like to use the Gaussian blur. You can play around with these. This is how you're going to make yours look different than mine. And it's not going to look exactly like a copy and paste. I like to use the Gaussian blur. So I'm going to click drag and I'm going to drop it on there. If you notice it got a little blurry and it's going to open up this new tab up here on the right called open effects. This is where we can edit the blur edit the strength of it. I can make it super blurry or not blurry at all. I like to make it a little bit more than what it was before, but not so much that it degrades the video. Bingo, that layer is done. So we're gonna click on our next layer. We're gonna change the opacity. Notice if you bring it all the way to 100%, it puts your blocks back on. So I always click on here and drag it down just a tad, just a skosh. If you'll notice, it took away the blocks above and below, but I can still see my project at hand. On this layer, we're gonna zoom in. For those of you using a rectangle uh, webcam, you're going to want to make sure to zoom in enough to crop that out. So we're going to zoom in. I like to fill the screen up a little bit. Bingo. That's where I like it. You can move it up. You can move it down. You can go left and right. Um, some people like to bring it up top. Some people like to bring it down low. Just depends on what you want to do. It's your clip after all. I like to leave it pretty central, partially because I know that there's going to be information on TikTok right here. It's going to be your like, your profile, your share buttons right here. And then there's going to be your name and your CC right here. So I don't want to bring information that I want seen down below that. And I know that there's going to be the follower and for you page pages up here. So I don't want to bring my the information that I want seen up high enough to where it's being blocked out. For what I'm making today, this is going to be perfect. If you want to take a look at your product so far, you can click the play button here. And you can see everything centered up. Everything looks great. Now we just need to get your face on here, which is pretty easy. All right, so we're going to bring the opacity on this one up. Again, you're going to notice that's going to fill it out. 
it's not a huge deal for what I'm doing. For those of you using a rectangle webcam, if you want to, you can use the cropping feature here and you can crop out the webcam. I used to do that, but I felt like it messed up my face cam a little bit. It made me look blurry, even when the rest of my content didn't. Um, so I started using the fusion tool, which is very, very simple. Um, and so we're gonna show you how to do that today because that's what I do. So you're gonna highlight the clip that you want you're going to right click on it and you're going to make new fusion clip. You'll notice it changed the name to fusion clip and it added that fusion clip up here. Once you have that selected, select it again. You're going to use this tool right down here next to the editing called the fusion tool and it's going to bring you to a different screen. You'll see the layer that we're working with. You'll see some different options on how to edit out. Basically these are masking tools, so we're going to use I like to use the ellipse. You can if you're using a, a rectangle webcam, you can use the rectangle um, and you can change these and format them. I believe the I don't I haven't messed with these ones a lot. I believe they're for like very detailed masking if you want to outline yourself. Um, but for today, we're just going to use the ellipse. That's what I normally use. If you'll notice when I click on that, it brings this circle up and this all this from the layer is gone. So I can click and drag this. I can edit the size of it. I can put it over my face. And then that's all we're going to get from that layer. So bingo, I've got it somewhere that I think is going to be appropriate. You can always come back and edit it by coming back to the Fusion page, clicking the ellipse here, and then you'll be able to re-edit this if you notice, oh, it cut part of my face off or I want more or less. Um, now when we go back to edit, you'll notice there's my face that wasn't there before because that layer is now visible. You will notice when you do this, um, once you create a fusion clip, there is a red bar that's going to be up here, uh, and that's DaVinci rendering your fusion clip. So you want to make sure to wait if you're wanting to watch and see what's what's going on, or if the if you try to play and the video gets all laggy on you, it's that's why it's still rendering. Anytime you edit this clip, it's going to have to re-render that. So just know that. So I'm going to move this. Again, keeping in mind where TikTok puts stuff on the screen. So I'm going to put my face cam somewhere where you can see it. It's not being blocked out by part of TikTok. And then again, this is where yours is going to be different than mine. You can zoom it in more. You can cut out the top half of the screen. Whatever you want to do, it's your content. So I like to bring mine up towards the left side of the screen because I know this area is pretty open and I can put it here without blocking out my content. People can see by, by seeing this, people acknowledge that I'm streaming. This isn't just some clip. This is this is a live stream. And I feel like including my face, I know some people don't like to do it. I feel like including my face helps people acknowledge the fact that I'm a streamer. And maybe if they like this content, then maybe they'll click the follow button on my Twitch stream. So let's check out what we've got so far. You notice it's still rendering here. So we're going to let it wait a second. Nice shot. Let's go, baby. So now as far as formatting goes, the clip is ready to go. I like to keep my TikToks somewhat short, especially gaming TikToks. I feel like it makes people more likely to click that follow through button if they get all of the meat, all of the goodies of your clip without having to wait through a bunch of nonsense. So we're going to clip a little bit of the beginning, middle and end to make that more appealing. So we're going to be using the blade tool for that. Um, this is a good point to click file, save project. These processes, these steps will get a lot easier. They seem very, very daunting at first, but this clip would already be edited if I wasn't trying to show you guys every single step. So the reason I like to do this this way and then edit after is because now I can just edit everything together. To do so is very, very simple. If you want to do something to multiple clips, it's just like just about anything else you're going to do on the computer. Basically select a clip, click control, you can add which clips you're messing around with right there, or you can click and drag highlight all of them, then you'll be good to go. I personally, once I get to this stage, I like to link them so that I know that everything's gonna be done to the clip exactly the same and I don't have to reselect them every, over and over and over again. So I right click once I've got them all selected, click link clips, notice it brought the little link up and anything that I do to these clips moving forward, even if I click off, if I click one, it'll reselect all of them. So now we're gonna use the blade tool and we're going to cut out the useless information that's in the video and make it more appealing. Um, I like to use this little bar here 
because you can slowly scroll through frame by frame basically and figure out what you want to cut out. So I know that I want to catch myself ADSing on this guy, catch him jumping and getting destroyed. So I'll go to right before I ADS on that. So my information fills the screen. So we're starting here. Bingo. So I'm going to click the blade tool and I'm going to clip right on the line. You're going to notice that it's going to separate all of these clips from these clips. Right click in the middle. Ripple delete. Uh, you don't have to use the ripple delete every time, but if you use that, it'll move the other clips forward. If you notice there how it moved them all to the front. If you just delete, then you would have to go move these clips forward. So you don't have a blank, uh, some blank video in front of what you're doing. So we got that shot. Bingo, that's the beginning of our TikTok. I celebrate a little bit, I get a woo-hoo-hoo-hoo. -hoo -hoo. And then I want to catch myself, I want to cut some of this out because some of this is useless information. So I celebrate there. I'm getting shot at. I'm going to clip that right there because you see me get shot at. So you see me acknowledge that somebody's shooting at me from that direction. So I clip that, and then I'm going to go to... This spot on the ramp where Rick, I spot this guy. Bingo. Spotted him. So I want to catch that shot as well. So we're going to clip right there. And I'm going to again, I'm going to right click, ripple delete. I'm just going to pull that clip forward. Then you'll catch me zoom in. Bing. Headshot that dork. little celebration, little let's go baby. And then I'm going to clip that out. I'm going to clip the end here. Delete selected. Bingo. Now I've got an 11 second clip of me playing Fortnite. This would be a great time to add maybe your name, your Twitch logo, whatever you want on here. Again, you would basically just left click import media. Bingo. Let's do a file save project. So then I can bring this down here. And again, you're just going to add it as a layer. Basically, you're going to Lengthen it to the end of the clip or wherever you want the layer to be. And again, you can edit all of that here. Bingo. So we're going to file, save the project. And then once we're done with it and it's ready to go, I'm going to use file, quick export. I'm going to bring up this information here. I'm not exporting to YouTube or Vimeo. I'm just saving the video, basically. So make sure this is all legit. Export. You're going to want to name it. I recommend making a folder that is ready for your final TikToks. Um, so if you notice right here, this is Twitch to TikTok. So I've got that saved. So this is where I save all of my videos that are done. So it's very easy for me to go find a video when I'm ready to upload something. Bingo. She's all done. We could close. We're good to go. Now, there's a few different ways that you can bring that clip from your computer to TikTok. I personally like to save it to Google Drive download from my phone and then upload to TikTok, but you could simply just upload to TikTok from your computer. Um, I find it easier to download to my phone because I can add that to TikTok wherever I am, whether I'm near my PC or not. Well, there you have it. The video is edited and formatted to fit on a phone screen. It is saved to our computer or saved to our phone. So we are ready to upload to TikTok whenever we want. Thanks for coming to hang out and check out my first YouTube video. I look forward to making more going forward.